Hi, my name is Sherry, and I am a journey reader for today. I am following the Bridges of Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. So if you don't mind joining me today as I read Numbers chapters 31 through 33. The Lord said to Moses, take vengeance on the Midianites for the Israelites. After that, you will be gathered to your people. So Moses said to the people, arm some of your men to go to war against the Midianites so that they may carry out the Lord's vengeance on them. Send into battle a thousand men from each of the tribes of Israel. So 12,000 men armed for battle, a thousand from each tribe, were supplied from the clans of Israel. Moses sent them into battle, a thousand from each tribe, along with Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, who took with him articles from the sanctuary and the trumpets of, for signaling. They fought against Midian as the Lord commanded Moses and killed every man. Among their victims were Evi, Rechem, Zer, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, son of Beor, with the sword. The Israelites captured the Midianite women and children and took all the Midianite herds, flocks, and goods as plunder. They burned all the towns where the Midianites had settled, as well as their camps. They took all the plunder and spoils, including the people and animals, and brought the captives, spoils, and plunder to Moses and Eleazar, the priest and the Israelite assembly at their camp on the plain of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. Moses, Eleazar the priest, and all the leaders of the community went to meet them outside the camp. Moses was angry with the officers of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds who returned from the battle. Have you allowed all the women to live? He asked them. They were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the pure incident, so that a plague struck the Lord's people. Now kill all the boy boys and kill every woman who has slept with a man, but save for yourselves every girl who has never slept with a man. Anyone who has killed someone or touched someone who was killed must stay outside the camp seven days. On the third and seventh days, you must purify yourselves and your captives. Purify every garment as well as everything made of leather, goat hair or wood. Then Eleazar the priest said to the soldiers who had gone into battle, this is what is required by the law that the Lord gave Moses, gold, silver, bronze, iron, tin, and lead. And anything else that can withstand fire must be put through the fire, and then it will be clean. But it must also be purified with the water of cleansing, and whatever cannot withstand fire must be put through the water. On the seventh day, wash your clothes, and you will be clean. Then you may come into the camp. The Lord said to Moses, you and Eleazar the priest and the family heads of the community are to count all the people and animals that were captured. Divide the spoils equally between the soldiers who took part in the battle and the rest of the community. From the soldiers who fought in the battle, set apart as tribute for the Lord one out of every 500, whether people, cattle, donkeys, or sheep, Take this tribute from their half share and give it to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part. From the Israelites' half, select one out of every 50, whether people, cattle, donkeys, or sheep, or other animals. Give them to the Levites, who are responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. So Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. 
The plunder remaining from the spoils that the soldiers took was 675,000 sheep and 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 women and women who had never slept with a man. The half share of those who fought in the battle was 337,500 sheep, of which the tribute for the Lord was 675. 36,000 cattle, of which the tribute for the Lord was 72. 30,500 donkeys, of which the tribute for the Lord was 61. 16,000 people, of whom the Lord, whom the tribute, tribute for the Lord was 32. Moses gave the tribute to Eleazar the priest as the Lord's part, as the Lord commanded Moses. The half belonging to the Israelites, which Moses set apart from that all from that of the fighting men, the communities have, was three hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred sheep, thirty six thousand cattle, thirty thousand five hundred sheep. 30,500 donkeys, and 16,000 people. From the Israelites' half, Moses selected one out of every 50 people and animals as the Lord commanded him, and gave them to the Levites, who were responsible for the care of the Lord's tabernacle. Then the officers who were over the units of the army, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, went to Moses and said to him, Your servants have counted the soldiers under our command, and not one is missing. So we have brought as an offering to the Lord the gold articles which of us acquired, armlets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, and necklaces, to make atonement for ourselves before the Lord. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted from them the gold, all the crafted articles, all the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds that Moses and Eleazar presented as a gift to the Lord weighed 16,750 shekels. Each soldier had taken plunder for himself. Moses and Eleazar the priest accepted the gold from the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds and brought it into the tent of meeting as a memorial for the Israelite before the Lord. Numbers chapter 32. The Reubenites and Gadites, Gadites, who had very large herds and flocks, saw that the lands of Jazer and Gilead were suitable for livestock. So they came to Moses and Eleazar the priest and to the leaders of the community and said, Ataroth, Dibon, Jazer, Nimra, Heshbon, Elale, Sibam, Nebo, and Beon, the land of the Lord subdued before the people of Israel, are suitable for livestock and your servants have livestock. If we have found favor in your eyes, they said, let this land be given to your servants as our possession. Do not make us cross the Jordan. Moses said to the Gadites and Reubenites, should your fellow Israelites go to war while you sit here? Why do you discourage the Israelites from crossing over into the land the Lord has given them? This is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to look over the land. After they went up to the valley of Eshkol and viewed the land, they discouraged the Israelites from entering the land the Lord had given them. The Lord's anger was aroused that day, and he swore his oath. Because they have not followed me wholeheartedly, not one of those who were 20 years old or more, when they came up out of Egypt, will see the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hmm. Not one except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Kenizzite, and Joshua, son of Nun. 
for they follow the Lord wholeheartedly. The Lord's anger burned against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years, until the whole generation of those who had done evil in his sight was gone. And here you are, a brood of sinners, standing in the place of your fathers and making the Lord even more angry with Israel. If you turn away from following him, he will again leave all his people in the wilderness and you will be the cause of their destruction. Then they came up to him and said, we would like to build pens here for our livestock and cities for our women and children. But we will arm ourselves for battle and go ahead of the Israelites until we have brought them to their place. Meanwhile, our women and children will live in fortified cities for protection from the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until each of the Israelites have received their inheritance. We will not receive any inheritance with them on the other side of the Jordan because our inheritance has come to us on the east side of the Jordan. Then Moses said to them, If you will do this, if you will arm yourselves before the Lord for battle, and if all of you who are armed cross over the Jordan before the Lord until he has driven his enemies out before him, then when the Lord or when the land is subdued before the Lord, you may return and be free from your obligation to the Lord and to Israel. And this land will be your possession before the Lord. But if you fail to do this, you will be sinning against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. Build cities for your women and children, and pens for your livestock, but do what you have promised. The Gadites and Reubenites said to Moses, We, your servants, will do as our Lord commands. Our children and wives, our flocks and herds, will remain here in the cities of Gilead. But your servants, every man who is armed for battle, will cross over to fight before the Lord, just as our Lord says. Then Moses gave orders about them to Eleazar the priest and Joshua son of Nun, and to the family heads of the Israelite tribes. He said to them, If the Gadites and Reubenites, every man armed for battle, cross over the Jordan with you before the Lord, then when the land is subdued before you, you must give them the land of Gilead as their possessions. But if they do not cross over with you armed, they must accept their possession with you in Canaan. The Gadites and Reubenites answered, Your servants will do what the Lord has said. We will cross over before the Lord into Canaan and armed but the property we inherit will be on the side of the Jordan. Then Moses gave to the Gadites and Reubenites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, and kingdom of Sion, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the whole land with, his, with its cities and the territory around them. The Gadites built up Dibon, Atarath, Aror, Atroth, Shopan, Jazar, and Jogbaha, Beth Nimra and Beth Haran as fortified cities and built pens for their flocks. And the Reubenites rebuilt Heshbon, Alea, and Kirathaim, as well as Nebo, Baal, and Mian. These names were changed and Sibma. They gave names to the cities they rebuilt. The descendants of Machir, son of Manasseh, went to Gilead, captured it, and drove out of the Amorites who were there, and drove out the Amorites who were there. So Moses gave Gilead to the Machirites, the descendants of Manasseh, and they settled there. Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, captured their settlements and called them Havoth-Jair. 
and Noba captured Kenath and its surrounding settlements and called it Noba after himself. Numbers chapter 33. Here are the stages in the journey of the Israelites when they came out of Egypt by divisions under the leadership of Moses and Aaron. At the Lord's command, Moses recorded the stages in their journey. This is their journey by stages. The Israelites set out from Ramses on the 15th day of the first month, the day after the Passover. They marched out defiantly and full of all the Egyptians who were burying all their firstborn, whom the Lord has struck down among them. For the Lord had brought judgment on their gods. The Israelites left Ramses and camped at Sukkoth. They left Sukkoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. They left Etham, turned back to Pi Haroth to the east of Baal Zephon, and camped near Migdal. They left Pi Haroth and passed through the sea into the desert. And when they traveled for three days in the desert of Etham, they camped at Mara. They left Mara and went to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees. Where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there. They left Elam and camped by the Red Sea. They left the Red Sea and camped by the desert of Sin. They left the desert of Sin and camped by Dobka. They left Dobka and camped by Alush. They left Alush and camped by Repidim, where there, where there was no water for the people to drink. They left Repidim and camped in the desert of Sinai. They left the desert of Sinai and camped at Hebroth Hatava. They left Kibroth Hatava and camped at Hazaroth. They left Hazaroth and camped at Rithma. They left Rithma and camped at Reman Perez. They left Rima Perez and camped at Libna. They left Libna and camped at Risa. They left Risa and camped at Kehelath. They left Kehelath and camped at Mount Sheper. They left Mount Sheper and camped at Harada. They left Harada and camped at Makelath. They left Makelath and camped at Tahath. They left Tahath and camped at Tara. They left Tara and camped at Mithka. They left Mithka and camped at Hashmona. They left Hashmona and camped at Mosera. They left Moseroth and camped at Bene Jekan. They left Bene Jekan and camped at Or Hagadad. They left Or Hagadad and camped at Jodbata. They left Jodbata and camped at Abrona. They left Abrona and camped at Ezion Geber. They left Ezion Geber and camped at Kadesh. And in the desert of Zin. They left Kadesh and camped at Mount Or on the border of Edom. At the Lord's command, Aaron the priest went up to Mount Or where he died on the first day of the fifth month of the 40th year after the Israelites came out of Egypt. Aaron was 123 years old when he died on Mount Or. The Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev or the Negev of Canaan, heard that the Israelites were coming. They left Mount Or and camped at Zalmana. They left Zalmana and camped at Punan. They left Punan and camped at Oboth. They left Oboth and camped at Ai Abarim, on the border of Moab. They left Ai Abiram and camped at Dibon Gad. They left Dibon Gad and camped at Alman Diblathaim. They left 
Alam Dibathaim and camped in the mountains of Abiram near Nebo. They left the mountains of Abiram and camped on the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. There on the plains of Moab, they camped along the Jordan from Beth Jeshemoth to Abel Shittim. On the plains of Moab, by the Jordan across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into Canaan, drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you. Destroy all their carved images and their cast idols, and demolish all their high places. Take possession of the land and settle in it, for I have given you the land to possess. Distribute the land by lot, according to your clans. To a larger group, give a larger inheritance. To a smaller group, a smaller one. Whatever falls to them by lot will be theirs. Distribute, to, distribute it according to your ancestral tribes. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land, those you allow to remain will become barbs in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They will give you trouble in the land where you will live. And then I will do to you what I plan to do to them. I pray that the Lord adds a blessing to the reading of this word, Numbers chapters 31 through 33.